there's a bunch of new attractions around the UK, both this year and a couple from last year that I've not managed to get on. So I've taken my annual pilgrimage down to the parks down south and uh, in this video I'm going to go on all the new rides that I can get on and uh, share my in-depth thoughts. The first one is Legoland. We're going to get on Mini Figure Speedway. Bah! Okie dokie, so we've just done our first new ride of this trip and that was uh, Minifigure Speedway. So I managed to get on both sides. It is a great addition to the park, it is probably the best coaster here as you'd expect, it's the newest etc. There's a few things, I mean it's more intense going backwards than I expected. I had heard some people say one track's more intense than the other. Didn't feel that personally, they felt much of a muchness. Um, the, se the seats aren't particularly adult friendly. I mean, I'm not the largest chap, I'm certainly not skinny. Uh, but it was more like my legs, I felt like your legs were squished in the middle of the, the, the train, which was a little odd. Um, also, very random, um, a bird crapped on me in the station because they don't have those spikes above, so uh, just, just be careful of those birds flying around. The queue line's a little odd. It's, uh, it's very plain, very cattle penny. Um, at the time of recording, at least, you can't pick your site. Well, maybe you could, but the guy's guiding you like, you go this way, you go that way. We were lucky that just timing wise, we got on both sides back to back. Um, so maybe if we'd asked, you could have, but it's not a free choice. It's not you pick a lane and you go, uh, you get directed into it. Towards the station itself, the uh, the queue line gets, I don't know if I want to say claustrophobic. I'll put some footage in, but basically the, the fencing around you, it's quite narrow. Uh, so if you are somebody that doesn't like tight spaces, it might not be your thing. That said, uh, it is a great addition to the park. Um, both sides are equally good. I don't think there's one that you kind of need to get on over the other one. Uh, they're subtly different layouts, obviously, and they interact with each other, which is quite nice. Uh, but yeah, I think that's a solid addition to the park and uh, a great start for uh, our first new ride of the trip. Right, so second one, this one's, I mean this is a bit of a bonus because it's not new this year, it's new to me because I was in Chessington last year, a month before the thing opened. But I've just got on Mandrel Mayhem. Um, the theming in here is really, really impressive. Fantastic, all the way through the queue, into the station. So well done, amazingly themed. There she goes. Uh, I had walk on, which was great, except the queue doesn't seem to have a shorter version, so when it is quiet, you've still got a ridiculous amount of wandering back and forward. Um, I think for a kid's... This is the first inverted coaster in this park. And possibly many kids' first experience of going upside down. I thought that was absolutely fantastic. My partner screamed the whole way around and I thought, uh-oh, she no likey. I got off and she went, that was bloody brilliant. So it is amazing. Um, it, it's about to come back again. Where is it? There it is! Um, yeah, no, that is a fantastic addition. I mean, it's a B&M. and &M. ms are notoriously just fantastic coasters, so I'm not really surprised. Vest's quite comfortable. Um, yeah, just an absolutely fantastic ride. And one, given the small queues, I'm going to get on a few more times today. Ghost Train. So I've just got on that for the first time. Um, <laughs> I found that really funny. Uh, there was people who were genuinely scared. Uh, so if you got, if you are easily scared, I'd be careful. Um, there will be spoilers in this because I'm going to go through it in detail. So you go into the first pre-show room called the waiting room. They are super, super, super strict on no phones. There were a couple of people who tried to get their phones out and kept getting told to put them away. Uh, so there's no footage for this one. Uh, so you do the waiting room and then you go through basically straight onto the train. Uh, so you, you sit on this train, there's a couple of actors that run back and forward along the train. Uh, the train it does move a little bit because it goes from one scene to the next, but there's a lot of simulated movement to make it feel like it's going a lot more than that. Uh, then you go off the train and you're in this different place, you go into the crypt. 
uh, there's a guy doing all spooky talking and stuff and there's like a coffin that he tries to open and then there's like it goes dark and then this angel thing flies over your head, it's a ghost, uh, which scared a woman in front of us and nearly broke my partner's toes because she stepped back. Um, <clears throat> then from there you go back into the train again, uh, a different train this time but you think it's the same train, you go on this train uh, and again you know they get you in, they close the doors and train starts moving again, only this time all the actors become possessed, uh, UV lights come on, there's like all writing along the train and then these nuns, these kind of like deathly nuns start running up and down and getting up in your face. Now they will not touch you, so if you're kind of scared of that it does make it very clear the actors will not touch you, do not touch them. Um, as I said, I found the whole thing hilarious, um, I just, clearly not a lot scares me, uh, but there were plenty of people jumping and crapping themselves. Um, so yeah, if you like a jump scare, or if you're not bothered by anything, it's worth it. I'd say the experience itself is about 15 to 20 minutes long in total, so just bear that in mind. Um, and the queue, I actually really like the queue. The queue line has so much nods to past attractions. It's even got a nod to before the park existed. There's like the world ski, water ski thing. Uh, if you've seen it, I had a series on the history of Thorpe Park, or I still have it on the channel, and I mentioned that. So if you haven't checked that out and you like this park, go check that out. Uh, but yeah, no, that was pretty good. Um, so I've done that today. I did saw the ride, not saw the ride, uh, Walking Dead the ride. I'm not going to cover that one, that's quite old, albeit it was new to me. Um, yeah, Let's see what's next. Well, that there, Iberia, was meant to be on my list for this trip. It, <laughs> it was kind of the main event of this trip, it was going to be the highlight, etc, etc. Now, to be fair, I booked this trip when Iberia was completely out of action when they were working on the lift hill. So I knew there was a risk that it wasn't going to be running. But then of course it has been running until yesterday when it valid. Uh, and right now, you can maybe see a crane about here, uh, they're currently lifting the train back off the track. To be honest, I kind of hoped they would have done that overnight and that the ride might have been open again today. Don't know if they just can't do it at night, couldn't get a, a crane in time. Uh, so I'm curious whether this will reopen tomorrow or it's going to be shut for quite some time again. Um, I think maybe a lesson learned to them though that they can't run that train empty in the morning because clearly it needs a minimum weight to get around the track. So I had hoped to get on it. I mean it does look spectacular, I really wanted to try that stall out. Everybody says the stall is better than any other stall on RMCs, on Intamins, the whole lot. I've done Iron Gwazi, I've done um, Velocicoaster, I've done Batman Escape, so I've done a bunch of those stalls, I really like to compare this. Not going to happen on this trip unfortunately, so uh, that's a little disappointing. Right, so the wave. Um, I was always very critical of its predecessor, Shockwave. was not a fan. Yes, it was the UK's only standing coaster. That was unique, for sure. And I know there's a lot of people that absolutely loved that ride. I did not. I thought it was really uncomfortable. So now, the Wave, they've got sit-down seats. It is significantly better. Like, those are very, very comfortable seats. Um, the ride is way smoother, much, much nicer. In terms of theming, they obviously rethemed this whole area a couple of years ago and so that's where the shop, the sort of surf park comes in to stay in that theming. They've not done a massive amount in terms of theming, I mean they put the head chopper in, which looks like it's miles away when you're off the rides. So it actually looks a lot closer when you're on it, which I guess is the whole point. Um, so theming, mediocre. There's a few posters in the, the queue. Uh, station, nothing has changed. Um, the one thing I will say though is I'm kind of curious why they only bought one train. Now, it could be a cost thing. That used to run two shockwave trains many, many years ago and I've been on one for a long time. Uh, it is only one. It obviously can handle multiple, it has enough block sections, but they only have one train and the throughput is terrible. Like really, really bad. The ride actually broke down when we were in the queue and they didn't communicate very well. There was one announcement that it was a technical delay. There was no other announcements, nothing. Like they're chucking a train out roughly every four or five minutes. It is really, really poor. So in terms of the ride itself, I think the ride is great and it's a massive improvement on what was there before. But I don't think the park is doing a particularly good job at running it. 
And I think a second train would definitely help. I don't know if that's maybe just been a budget streak constraint and maybe they'll add a second train in the future. Um, it's definitely an improvement. Definitely want to come down here and try out. And uh, yeah, another one ticked off on the list. That's interesting because when I was here earlier the train was sitting in the station so either it's done some testing and I've noticed it or they've, or they've reversed it into, uh, into the maintenance shed. I was hoping I would have seen it running today but I have not but it has moved because it was definitely there earlier. A little bit frustrating that I kind of timed it badly but uh, I'll be back at some point, I'll get on it. Right well there you go, that is me got on a selection of new attractions around the country. Obviously bad timing for Hyperia and I'm a little early for the new uh, the new Intamin Lift and Launch Coaster here. But if you've been on any of these rides, let me know your thoughts. What's your favourite? What do you think of them? And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get back to try Hyperia at some point and get back here for their Lift and Launch. Anyway, I have been Chris, you have been watching Coaster Dad and I'll see you in the next one.